Welcome back. All right, so video idea I've had for a while now, and I'm like, yeah, I might as well do it today. Might as well do it today. We're like two and a half weeks from the end of the regular season. Why not? On the idea of trying to make an argument for how any of these teams could win a Stanley Cup, and then which ones would be acceptable? Which ones would general fan bases go, you know what? Good for them. And why is it not Vegas, Tampa Bay, or Boston? So anyways, uh, we'll start off to looking out west. We'll look at Vancouver first. And of course, Vancouver has been in the playoffs once since 2015, and that was 2020. And I've seen all the arguments about, oh, 2020 wasn't real hockey, and it wasn't real playoffs. Yeah. Um, I covered the whole 2020 playoffs. It sure looked like teams were trying. It sure looked like it was hockey. The people who have be bemoaned it are the ones that generally either weren't happy with who won the Stanley Cup, weren't happy that their team lost, so they'll cling to an excuse and go, see, it wasn't real hockey, so my team lost, so it doesn't count as a loss. But in general, the, the bubble playoffs were one of the most bizarre playoffs we ever saw, but it was real hockey. And teams went out there and they gave everything they had, and uh, I, I can't begrudge anybody uh, who played in those playoffs. If people want to assume, oh, it didn't feel like real hockey, well, again, I was. Guys went out there and players got hurt and players played through injury and so again I'm not going to belittle what players did during that time but that's the only time the Canucks have made the playoffs since 2015 meaning this will be the first time that Vancouver has played in front of its own fans in a playoff environment in nine years so it's been a while now they've been 13 9 and 3 since the deadline that is concerning it's concerning but maybe they can turn that around come playoff time Edmonton, and I'm wearing the Oilers because there's a lot of pressure on the Oilers right now, isn't there? They said five points back of first place. They're five points ahead of third place, so they're pretty firmly entrenched in that second spot. Uh, the question marks for the Oilers are simple. Whether or not they're going to get the depth scoring when they need it. Uh, if they get the depth scoring, absolutely, they can go on a run. There's questions around Stuart Skinner, too. Is he a goaltender that can win you a Stanley Cup? Uh, depends on the kind of hockey that the Oilers are going to play. If they're going to play the 5-3-6-4 style, if other teams can't stop it. Uh, or if they're going to try to play that low-scoring, low-event style of game uh, and, and then see how Skinner responds to that. So it's going to be fascinating. McDavid, of course, with 59 points in 28 games since the All-Star break has been absolutely playing out of his mind. And I, I wouldn't rule out an Oilers Stanley Cup necessarily this June. Uh, then you get to Vegas, and Vegas is the one that, of course, most fans don't want to see win it because they won it last year. People feel like they're cheating. Mark Stone's going to come back in time for game one. Well, they're 12, 10, and 2 since the All-Star break, but they're trending in the right direction. Uh, they do have 90 points. They're three points clear of the LA Kings. They're six points clear of St. Louis, so that's the playoff line there, obviously. Uh, no reason to think Vegas is going to miss the playoffs. Now they've got Hurdle coming back, although he's in a non-contact jersey at, at uh, practice and everything. I don't think you would have the same level of acceptance from fans with the Vegas win as you would from Edmonton or Vancouver. And I think the Edmonton win would probably get more acceptance from Vancouver because for Edmonton, this would be like, what, their fourth try uh, with this core being in the playoffs and all that. So, I mean, there's no reason. To, I mean, four in a row, 2021, 2022, 2023, 20, well, it'll be fifth in a row. Look at that. The Oilers in the playoffs for a while now. But yeah, so, so Vegas is the one that I think we can all agree fans would not be happy with if they won the Stanley Cup, right? I think even Vegas fans know, hey, if if my team win it, win it, wins it again, might not want to go online for a little bit, you know, just because, or maybe you'll go online more because you want to see the rage. Uh, the LA Kings, 38, 25, and 11. And what's interesting with the Kings is they're only three points clear of LA, or they're only three points clear of St. Louis. They're not three points clear of themselves. There aren't two LA-based franchises in the NHL. Uh, Talbot's 9-5-1 with a 9-24 save percentage since the All-Star break. And the goaltending seems to be what people perceive as being the weakness on this team. I, I don't think it is. I think it's just that we look at Talbot and Redick, and, and for those of us who have been fans for a while in the game, you go, well, that tandem's not really scaring me. So I think there's some of that there. Uh, Kopitar leading him in scoring since the All-Star break because that's what Kopitar does. Noteworthy for the Kings. They've lost three in a row currently, so they're trying to turn that around. Uh, but yeah, the LA Kings, I, I still think they make the playoffs, and I think they'll be a tough out in the first round, which right now would be against Dallas. Now, Dallas is a team that has beaten LA and beaten them pretty well this year too. Uh, so LA... Uh, 38, 25, and 11, whereas Dallas is 47, 19, and 6. 17, 6, and 3 since the All-Star break. 
Uh, Dallas has won seven in a row. They have 103 points. And I think if they won the Stanley Cup, I think people will be happy for them. It would be their first Stanley Cup since 1999. There would be those who would argue it would be their first legitimate Stanley Cup. I would disagree with that. But to this day, there are people who look at 99 and go, no, nah, that shouldn't have counted. Now, Ottinger is the key for the Dallas Stars. If Ottinger's playing his best hockey, Dallas has a chance. If he's not, they may not make it. Um, but again, Johnston being their leading scorer since the All-Star break checks out. They have had no problem finding scoring. They have so many scoring forwards right now. Everything's clicking really well for them. They've won seven in a row. Beware of Dallas in the playoffs. So for the Kings, who are having their struggles, Stars playing really well. It might be better for Dallas if they get L.A. than St. Louis, just based on recent recent history between St. Louis and Dallas, right? Uh, then you got Colorado, 47-22-6. and six. They've hit a bit of a hiccup lately. There's a uh, discussion about whether or not Georgiev is going to be uh, the starter and, and how good is Georgiev, and I think that question's out there. Until you win a Stanley Cup, that question's going to be asked of you. When they won the Cup in 2022, of course, that was with Darcy Kemper as their starter. Uh, McKinnon leading them in points since the All-Star break because, of course, he is. Uh, most of the points leaders since the All-Star break are completely predictable. And so McKinnon being the leader for Colorado makes sense. They have 100 points. They have clinched a playoff spot. And Colorado's going to be really dangerous come playoff time. And if they win another Stanley Cup, I think most will accept it. I don't know how many were, are going to like it, but I think most would accept it. Um... I, I don't think they'd be one of those favorites, though, in terms of who who fans really want to see necessarily win it. But yeah, Colorado uh, has a real chance of winning their second in three years this year. Then you got Winnipeg. Now, Winnipeg has gone back to underdog status, right? They have 96 points, so they're seven points out of first in the division. That's basically gone. They're four points back of Colorado. Uh, the 15-12-1 record since the All-Star break is problematic. Very often, teams that do well in the playoffs are ones that are playing well since the All-Star break. And in Winnipeg's case, it's been a very mixed bag for the Winnipeg Jets. So they finished off that six-game losing streak. They won last night. So maybe this is a sign things are going to turn around. Uh, Hellebuck, has, has, his stats haven't been as good since the All-Star break. The 9-11 safe percentage, for instance, right around league average, a little above. Uh, so Hellebuck's probably got to get his game going. But so does everybody in Winnipeg, right? Uh, which is going to hurt Hellebuck's numbers when nobody in front of him is doing all that well either. Morrissey's been their leading scorer since the All-Star break. His 27 points in 28 games is indeed quite impressive. Uh, and the Winnipeg Jets have been impressive at times this year as well. And then there's Nashville. Now, Nashville, of course, their 18-game their point streak has been snapped, uh, losing two games in a row, but they sit with 43-27-4 as a record, 90 points. Uh, Nashville's one of those underdog stories. I think if Nashville finished the story they started in 2017, I think there'd be those who'd be quite happy about that. That would be a very entertaining plot line to follow as well as a sports fan. And they're six points clear of St. Louis, so I don't think they have to worry about St. Louis catching them necessarily. Uh, Saros has been much, much better since the All-Star break than he was before the All-Star break. The 915 safe percentage being a huge improvement over that first half of the season. Forsberg's been fantastic. 33 points in 23 games again since the All-Star break. And it'd be a feel-good story if Nashville won it. I think it's going to come down to goaltending for them. It's going to come down to goaltending for everybody, in, in essence. But with Nashville as well, if somebody shuts down Forsberg, who's that next forward that's going to take over the game? Um, if a team shuts down Yossi and Forsberg, are there enough weapons there for Nashville to go much further? Then you get to St. Louis, 40, 31, and 4. So they have 84 points, and this is where it's interesting too. They have more points than Philly, Washington, the Islanders, and the Detroit Red Wings. If St. Louis was in the East, would they be a playoff team? Maybe. So we might see a team miss the playoffs in the West that would make the playoffs in the East. Bennington's been fantastic, so is Hofer. Uh, they, this team will go as far as its goaltending will take them. They sit three points back of LA, as I previously mentioned. Bennington's 10-6-2 with a 9-22 safe percentage since the All-Star break. It's been very, very good. So for the Blues, uh, there's a reason for optimism. I would say, too, that the Stanley Cup that they won in 2019, it's not that far removed from 2019. There's still some pieces there from that team in 2019, including Bennington himself. Now we'll go out east. We'll talk about the Boston Bruins. They're 43, 17, and 15. They've had their struggles, though, uh, since the All-Star break. 12, 8, and 6. 101 points. The points total very, very good, of course, overall. Uh, this is a team that if they win the Stanley Cup, I don't think fans outside of Boston Bruins fandom will be happy. 
I think there'd be a lot of, well, I can accept them winning a Stanley Cup, but I don't like it. I think that's where the sentiment would be with Boston. Uh, Swayman's had his struggles since the All-Star break. I think he's still going to be the starter, but Olmark's definitely put himself back into that conversation. Swayman's 899 save percentage, a bit eyebrow raising since the All-Star break. Uh, Pasternak's still above a point per game since the All-Star break, even though the scoring slowed down a bit. He does have over 100 points on the season. Uh, I do have a question with Boston about if a team shuts down Pasternak in the first round, uh, do Boston do, do the Bruins get out of the first round? Because I, I don't know if they have weapons, uh, enough weapons anyways, to win a round if Pasternak gets shut down. Florida's 47-23-5. If the playoffs started two weeks ago, I think a lot of people would have picked Florida to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, they didn't start two weeks ago, and over the last couple weeks, Florida's had their struggles. Uh, they are... 16-9-1 uh, and one since the All-Star break. So that number is good. Uh, they have 100, or 99 points, so they're one short of 100. They're two points back of the Boston Bruins. They're only four points clear of Toronto. So Toronto beating Florida last night in regulation really helped Toronto's chances. Uh, but Matthew Kachuk's been the leading scorer for Florida since the All-Star break with 27 points in 25 games. Bobrovsky's been very good, so is Stolarz. Goaltending is not a problem for the Florida Panthers. Uh, now, if they win the Stanley Cup, there might be some who don't like it because warm the, the whole warm factor of uh, Southern hockey, you may hear that with Dallas too, of uh, it's not really a hockey market and I'm tired of this. Sunbelt teams winning cups and all this, but I, I would say Florida, it looks like they're due. I still think Florida, uh, they won the President's Trophy a couple years ago. Last year, they go all the way to the final. They're definitely going to be in the mix. Uh, Toronto 43-22-9. They're 18-8-1 since the All-Star break. So very good there. Uh, they have won three in a row. They have 95 points. Austin Matthews has been ridiculous. 22 goals in 27 games since the All-Star break. He has an outside shot at getting to 70 goals this year. And so Toronto, if, if, if you put any other logo in here, if it wasn't the Toronto Maple Leafs, and you put another team in here, I think fans would be a lot less critical when it's Toronto, it's going to be critical. And then you look at Toronto's playoff history over the last decade, and it's it's been sad. The one time they get out of the first round, they then lose against Florida in the second round. They still have that stigma attached to them of a team that cannot get over the hump come playoff time. So there's a lot of pressure. Feels like there's more pressure every year on Toronto. We'll see how they respond to it this year. Now, if Toronto won a Stanley Cup, there would be those who would say, finally, it's about time. And there would be those who still furrow their brow and say, I don't like it. This is, I, I don't like Toronto. I don't want them to win the Cup. I refuse to acknowledge them as Stanley Cup champions. There would be some of that in there too. But at any rate, which is going to happen with every every Stanley Cup, you're always going to have certain people that say, ah, it's not legitimate because remember in round one in game three. But anyways, uh, yeah, Toronto, I think, is probably better than they're getting credit for right now because we have memories of every playoff from 2017 on. We remember. Uh, Tampa Bay, 41-26-7. They're 14-8-2 since the All-Star break. Uh, they have 89 points, so they're six back of Toronto. They do have two games left against the Toronto Maple Leafs between now and the playoffs. Uh, Vasilevsky's been good at times. He's been mediocre at other times. They need him to be at his best if they're going to succeed in the playoffs. Uh, to me, it does feel like with Tampa Bay that they win their Cups in 2020 and 2021. They go to the final in 2022. Losing the first round last year, it feels like this year it might be a first or second round upset. It does feel like for Tampa, their best seasons are 2020 and 2021. This team is not as good as those teams were. Uh, but they've proven us wrong before. They proved us wrong in 2020 because 2019, they were the butt of everybody's jokes, right? So the 89 points means they're solidly entrenched in a playoff spot because you got Detroit at 82, Islanders on the board here at 89. Uh, Wash or 79, I should say, Washington at 82. So there's not really any danger. But will they win it? And of course, if they win it, there will be all the negativity about being over the salary cap because that's what that's what happens with Tampa Bay. Uh, even though right now I don't think they are over the salary cap. Detroit 37, 30, and 8 overall. They're 11, 12, and 2 since the All Star break. Detroit's been trending in the wrong direction. Uh, at times they look very good, and at times they don't. Now part of it I think is their goaltending, Alex Lyon. The 888 safe percentage since the All-Star break has to be concerning. And Reimer hasn't been fantastic either. So that's part of the problem here with Detroit is if they currently have 82 points, if they do make the playoffs, let's just say they jump in, they knock out Philadelphia, Washington jumps into third in the division, and Philadelphia drops out of a wild card spot to Detroit. 
Can we envision Detroit going on a run? I don't know that I can make an argument for Detroit winning a Stanley Cup. I don't know that I can. Um, I will say that if Detroit makes the playoffs and goes on a nice long run, I don't think anybody will begrudge them. It's been so long since Detroit was in the playoffs that if they do make it for the first time since, what, 2016, I, I don't think anybody will have any problem with any kind of run they go on, other than, of course, fans of teams that they knock out in the playoffs. Which brings us to the Rangers, the leading team in the Metro Division, 50-21-4 and four record. They have 104 points, so right now, looks like President's Trophy for them. There's no jinx attached to that because, in general, uh, while the President's Trophy team doesn't doesn't win Stanley Cups, dating back to, I mean, 2013 was the last time that there was a, a Stanley Cup win for a President's Trophy winner, the reality is you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different teams on the board with, that are within four points of each other. And if you get down to 99, you add another team. So all these teams are really close in terms of talent. The team that ends up finishing first, good for you, but come playoff time, it's not really a huge advantage. Uh, Panarin has been playing great since the deadline. Now, Panarin did not have a fantastic playoff last year, so he'll be looking for some redemption. We'll see how it goes for him. 42 points in 26 games tells you he's good. Oh, and Igor's been playing really well too. 931 safe percentage since the All-Star break. Look out for the Rangers come playoff time. Uh, for Carolina, and I will say to the Rangers, I think that would be an acceptable Stanley Cup win. It's been 30 years since the last one. The Canes are 47-21-7 overall. They're 19-6-2 over uh, the, the time since the All-Star break. They have 101 points. So they're right in the hunt for first overall, potentially. Kachetkov has emerged as their starting goaltender. He's been very good. Although Freddie Anderson's been very good as well. And Anderson's kind of won that role back. So Anderson's likely the Game 1 starter. But the bonus, if you're Carolina, is a team that was rumored to be in the market for goaltending not too long ago when both Kachetkov and Ranta were, were struggling. They pick up Spencer Martin. He turns out to be pretty good. But between Kachetkov and Anderson, now you're in a situation where if one's struggling, you don't have any fear of going to the other. They're both playing quite well. And Sebastian Ajo continues to score at above a point per game clip. Carolina's a team that was seen as a favorite at the start of the year. I don't think there's anything that's happened with Carolina that should give you any pause. In fact, adding Gensel and Kuznetsov at the deadline looks like that's exactly what that team needed. Philadelphia. Oh, oh, the red flags with Philadelphia. 36, 29, and 11 overall. 11, 10, and 5 since the All-Star break. Uh, 83 points, so they're only one point above the playoff line. Erson, 883 safe percentage. This is why Fedotov's going to get a chance to be the starter. Uh, Konechny's been their leading scorer over that time. He's only played 20 of the 26 games. But he has 23 points in those 20 games, so they need Konechny to be healthy. Uh, and for Philadelphia, they really they need to be able to basically limit chances in any series they play in the playoffs. So if they stay above the playoff line, they would need to really make sure the shots against stay below 25 in a game, which is difficult come playoff time, considering who they'd be playing against, which at this point would be Carolina. But if they drop into a wild card spot, it would either be Boston or the Rangers, unless... Uh, Florida or Carolina end up catching those top spots. Basically, what I'm saying here is there's no easy road for the Philadelphia Flyers, who have been having a lot of struggles lately. I, I have a hard time arguing them winning a round, much less winning a, winning the playoffs. But if they won a Stanley Cup, I think people would be quite happy for them. I would say that with Carolina, too. I think people have watched Carolina struggle for, for years to get over the hump in the playoffs. I think if they get there, I think most people would be generally happy for them. By happy, I don't mean like attending the parade and waving a flag and cheering. I just mean going, you know what? Good for them. Good for them. That's all I mean by the happy for them. Because sometimes you look and you go, they won the cup. Good on them. And sometimes you go, you know what? They won the cup. I don't, I don't care. I still can't stand them. Uh, Capitals, 36, 27, and 10 overall. Uh, they're 14, 9, and 3 since the All-Star break. Sometimes they look great. Sometimes they don't. Uh, it can depend on who scores first. If, if it's a three-goal difference, uh, Washington is likely going to lose. Uh, they have 82 points. Charlie Lindgren's been quite good. The 907 safe percentage since the All-Star break doesn't tell you how well he's playing. And Dylan Strom, above a point per game since the All-Star break. Strom's giving them scoring. And one thing that's scary with the Caps, if you want to argue about Stanley Cup, who do you shut down? The answer every other year would have been Ovechkin, which is fine if you still want to make that argument. But the Caps have shown this year they can win when Ovechkin's not scoring. Uh, the key thing with Capitals is you have to score first. Uh, with some of these teams, you have to score first. If you don't, uh, the game's going to get slowed down pretty badly, and uh, 
you, you might find yourself losing a game, and frustratingly so as well. This brings us to the Islanders, 32-27-15. They're 12-10-3 since the All-Star break. I think they've been better since Patrick Watt took over, to be honest. Uh, even when the results aren't necessarily there, I think the team overall is playing better. Uh, they're four points back of Philadelphia third. For third, they're three points back of both the uh, Wings and the Capitals. Sorokin has not looked like Sorokin this year, which makes me wonder if the Islanders make the playoffs, would Patrick Waugh have any concern about going with Varlamov as the playoff starter? I don't think he'd have any concerns. I think he knows how this works, having been an NHL goaltender, but it would raise some eyebrows if Varlamov's the starter. Uh, my answer to that would be Varlamov's been the better of the two goaltenders, I think, this season. Uh, Barzell has been their leading scorer since the All-Star break, right around a point per game at 24 points in 25 games. And we have seen that when the Islanders make the playoffs, they can be a really tough out. They, they can be very, very difficult to defeat. So I could potentially see an Islanders team going on a bit of a run. I would say the easiest argument to make for a Stanley Cup, I would say Vegas. Vegas for the Pacific, because defending Stanley Cup champions. Colorado for much the same reason here in the Central. I would say Florida, because Florida had that run to the final last year, and they've generally been quite good. And then in the Metro, I get the feeling the Canes are still the favorites. I think you can make more arguments for the Rangers to potentially win the Stanley Cup than the Canes, but I understand the sentiment. So I guess my question to you is, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way too, the most acceptable, I would think, to fans right now, I think that any of the Canadian teams would make most Canadian hockey fans happy. But if we just ignore that part for a moment, I would say the most acceptable in the Metro it, it feels like it might be the Rangers that people would be the most like, you know what? Good on them. Good on them. It's about time. It's about time. Uh, here in the Atlantic, it's tough. It kind of feels like Detroit might be the one that people might be the happiest about. Would it be Florida or would it be Toronto? Would there be enough people happy about Toronto winning if Toronto won a Stanley Cup for us to say, yeah, that's the one that would be most acceptable? Maybe. Uh, in the the Central, I would argue Winnipeg, after everything Winnipeg's been been going on with their, their attendance, which now is fine, but there's still all the discussions about Winnipeg and, and their their ability to make money in that market. But I do think there'd be people who'd be happy for Dallas or for Nashville. I don't know. St. Louis, I don't think there's any ill will there. Colorado, uh, there might be some friction towards Colorado with all their all-stars and all that crap. Uh, and then out in the Pacific, uh, obviously it wouldn't be Vegas. I feel like Edmonton might be the most acceptable of the remaining teams, uh, to the public anyways. I don't know if LA would get a lot of public acceptance and praise if they won a Stanley Cup. And Vancouver, I have no idea. No idea. I remember back in 2011, there were plenty of fans that did not want to see Vancouver win. In fact, I remember before that Cup final, uh, seeing some people online saying, I'm not watching. I don't like either of those teams. I can't believe it's Vancouver and Boston. What a terrible Stanley Cup. So I, I do remember that sentiment where people just didn't like Boston. They didn't like Vancouver either. And so they didn't want to watch. Obviously for me, I watched. Um, I didn't really enjoy some of the games, but I did watch. And uh, I would be perfectly fine with getting that rematch this year. Although if Dallas and Boston were to play in the Stanley Cup final, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, it would easily be the most obnoxious that I've ever been in my life ever if those teams were in the final because i wouldn't care about who won i would just enjoy the hockey and i would take copious amounts of notes i would praise players on both teams and i'd just be happy the whole time i don't think anybody wants to see that all right so let me know your thoughts because chaos rules the internet but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always it took me about four takes to get this right i think i got the feeling right for it this time i hope i did but let me know your thoughts hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you guys so much for all your support i will talk to you again